Righty ho, today we're going to be looking at Last Night by The Strokes, a very energetic little song from uh, 2001, something like that, and uh, there was a bit of a resurgence of indie music at the time, as I recall. Uh, this, for me, is still something I think of as new music, but it's actually 21 years ago, so there we go, we're all getting older. Um, but let's have a look at the, the groove for this song. Uh, the interesting thing, I think, for anybody who hasn't tried it before, is that we have some bass drum strokes happening in between the regular hi-hat strokes. So we've got a couple of variations on a fairly common quarter note groove and um, a few two-bar phrases to get the hang of. Uh, roughly sounds like this. Uh, starting off with a, a very sort of quarter note -y guitar, lick, riff, whatever you call it. Uh, that's not really a riff, is it? It's just very, some, some basic plonky chords. But we have this kind of ding 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 Splashy hats of night, she Sounds like that. Uh, the, the second of those two bar phrases is uh, one bass drum note short of you can't hurry love, which we'll maybe look at at another time. Uh, this introduces you to being able to play all sorts of stuff like uh, Valerie by Amy Winehouse, uh, the same groove for This Charming Man by The Smiths, and um, yeah, sort of all that kind of good quarter note stuff. So um, let's look at the two uh, details of the two main grooves that are being played in the song. And uh, I'll show you some exercises as well that help you kind of get used to this slightly awkward, if you've never done it before, interaction between, say, right hand and right foot and playing a groove like that without everything going wobbly. So the first uh, groove that we listen to is in the intro and also in the what I would call the, the bridge sections. And you've got this one, two, three, four, one, two and three and four. We have a two bar phrase where we have bass on one and three in the first bar and then on the second bar we've got the bass on the one and then the and of uh, two and the and of three. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, two and three and four, one, two, three, four, one, two and three and four, one, two, three, four, one, two and three and four. Now you may find the one, two, three, four pretty basic. So let's put that one on the side for a minute and we'll just focus on the second bar, which is one, two, and three, and four. Now, again, this is aimed at those of you who have not done this sort of groove before. So if you haven't played bass drum notes that don't coincide with your hi-hat or, or ride or whatever, uh, this is for you, right? Otherwise, if you already can do this comfortably, go away, you don't need this lesson. Let's look at the mechanics of this kind of beat and what some of the challenges might be if you've never tried this kind of thing before. We're basically looking at a quarter note beat, so it means I'm playing quarter notes on my hi-hat, and a, you know, a very basic version of this is the bass on one and three and the snare on two and four, which uh, is also being played in this song. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And any ands that we add to that will fall in between those quarters, in between my hi-hat notes. One, two, three, four. The ands, one and two and three and four and you must raise your eyebrows to emphasize four one and two and three and four and okay now if i'm going to add the bass drum in the first uh, instance on the and of two and and of three one two and three and four one two and three and four for the uninitiated you may find that your right hand wants to follow the right foot playing the bass there and you'll end up instead of going one two and you might go one two and yeah three and four ends up being three and four it's quite common because your right hand wants to interact uh in conjunction with your right foot so our, our bodies tend to want to do stuff together right and right left and left so we need to kind of teach the brain how to separate those two things out okay one two and three and four 
So a good exercise to do to develop that separation would be just to focus on the right hand and right foot a little bit and play effectively single strokes between the right hand and the right foot. Now you can do that on your hi-hat, one and two and three and four, and you can count or not count as you prefer, but you're looking to produce a very, very even sound. And two and three and four and. Now you might as well practice around the kit as well. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and. And you could do this as a little warm-up. You can do it with your other hand, left hand, right foot. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then while you're at it, do it between the hand and the left foot. Three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and. Okay, and that's quite a nice way to do a gentle exercise that kind of starts to liberate your limbs from following each other compulsively. Next, we can bring our focus back to the fact we're playing a groove and we're going to play the quarter note groove with the snare on two and four, but this time the bass is going to play all the ands. Okay, so it's like this. It's, it's simple, but you want to just focus on getting a nice, even sounding set of eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and four and one and two. I strongly recommend counting. One and two and practice with your metronome if you like. One and two and three and four and one and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now this doesn't apply to playing last night by the strokes. I don't think there's any uh, ride there, but why not practice with the ride as well? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And if you're feeling bold, bring your left foot in and play the two and four with the snare drum, like this. One and two and three and four and. That helps your coordination. And four and one and two and three and four and one and opens up new possibilities. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so... Spend a little bit of time just allowing yourself to be comfortable, again, with the mechanics of it. And then we come back to our groove and we can listen carefully and see if everything's sounding nice and even, right? So we've got one, two and three and four. One, two and three and four. After doing those exercises, you should find that the, the need to kind of follow the right hand will go away. But, oh, sorry, follow the right foot, I should say. One and three and four. You'll stop wanting to do that if you spend enough time working on that. Now, you could just practice the beat on its own, but if you look at some of those exercises, it just allows you to vary the, um, the work a little bit. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, once you're happy with that, we'll put the first bar back in. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. Now work on that until that's sounding really smooth and then the last part of that is to try and get the tempo up. Now the song is fairly brisk. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like this. And you may find it takes you a little bit of time to be able to play at that tempo, but 100% guaranteed if you work at it and focus on getting it sounding nice and clean, it'll come together for you and sound beautiful uh, when you put the mileage in. So now we've got the first groove of the song which appears in the intro in the bridges and uh, if you've worked out and, and started to develop a nice smooth interaction between your right hand and right foot you shouldn't find it too challenging to do the second groove which appears in the choruses and the verses of the song. Uh, we've got the bass in this case on the one, the three, and the and of four in the first bar, and then in the second bar we've got the and of one and the three, and it goes like this: one, two, three, four, and one and two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one and two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one and two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one and two. It's also this charming man by the Smiths. Two. Four and one and two, three, four. One, two, three, four and one and two, three, four. Now, uh, in the 
the song. There are three repetitions of that pattern, two bars each, so six bars in total, and then uh, two more repetitions of just bass on uh, one and three. So it goes like this. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, and one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four. No easy. Uh, 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 uh. So one, two, three, four, five. And that's what happens throughout most of the song. And that pretty much wraps that up. Now, this is a gateway drug to being able to play things like Valerie by Amy Winehouse, Slash Mark Ronson, uh, Can't Hurry Love, which made uh, popular by the likes of uh, Phil Collins and originally the Supremes, of course, and uh, that kind of groove, Happy by Pharrell, the quarter note uh, groove. Uh, I think it originates from a sort of gospel feel. If you followed this lesson and you've learned something from it, let me know in the comments. And it, well, if you followed this lesson and you've learned nothing from it, let me know as well, because I can learn something from that. Uh, because I'm in a good mood as well, I'll put a quickie chart to the song in the description for the video that you can download as a PDF or whatever. Uh, and that kind of wraps that up for today. So uh, I think you should go away and practice.